I'm Kerry from Sticks and Steel above and below and today we're going to do some demonstrations of how to climb with the one stick method with the aider loop which is this and also how to install a lifeline from the ground and climb sticks with the lifeline. So the first thing that you're going to do anytime you're setting sticks up is roughly use your forehead level as where you want to set it. So this tree is kind of wonky, so I'm going to have to come around this side. Okay, so once you get your stick set up, pull the strap tight. So what I like to do actually, and I'll do it now to show you, is because this stick is going to drop, when you pull on it, I'm going to go a little higher than head height. Ideally, you want it to sink down to forehead height. So that's above my head. And now when you pull it, and weight on that, that's forehead height. So that's step one. Okay, so this is just for a little demo. I'll do it when I'm actually in the tree, but this is my tether. And actually the saddle I'm wearing is my work saddle. Uh, I did hunt in it all last year, it's a tree motion. It's probably five times the cost of your average um, deer hunting saddle. But that being said, I am making my own custom deer hunting saddle this fall or this summer actually and I'll be testing it but I'll be wearing this for demo purposes so this is my tether this is the system I use when I'm climbing off the sticks like this the one stick method so this tether actually right here that I'm going to be climbing with as a safety tether will actually be my climbing my uh, hunting tether once I'm at height so how this works is I can pull on this hitch and when you stop, it'll hold. More importantly, when I want to adjust it, because there's a micro pulley in here, I can pull up on that. It tends really smooth. As soon as you lean back into it, it waits. So that's really important to have that. This knot is called a VT, a Valdorian Tresse. You can look it up on YouTube, but uh, you know, just Google VT knot, how to tie it. Everybody ties them a little bit different, but the good thing about this one is it tends, it runs really smooth. As soon as you weight it, it locks up. But then even under weight, you can tend it one-handed. So that's key. So this is gonna be my tether and I will tie it from the ground. This is an easy way to do it with sticks. You just rest it over top of here. So I'm gonna tie a running bowline. And again, look that up on YouTube, but it's pretty simple. I tie a loop in, I go around the standing end of the line. That's the end that comes down to your saddle through the loop around the non-standing in back through the loop and then you tie it any running bowline will have this loop right here and what a running bowline is it's basically a cinching knot so once it's around the tree it cinches so this is key because you're going to have this when you're climbing so to start i'm going to take the slack out to about chest high Always important too to put a stop or not, just a basic overhand knot in the bottom of your uh, of your uh, tether. I'm gonna step up. Now remember, you're attached to the tree the whole time. want to get this up tighten it up take your slack out again by tending now I can just hang in the saddle so what you're going to do then is you pull to break that a bit lower yourself just until you can reach this you buckle so then you unbuckle Put some slack in your sticks. Pull them up. So again, you're very comfortable and relaxed. You're hanging in your stand or off your, your tether. Lock that into place. Now you can step in your aider loop. Lock that down. Climb up. Keeping three points of contact with the tree.
And again, you only lower yourself until you can reach your sticks. Loosen the stick. Again, you're hanging off your running bowling up and above you. Take your stick. Move it up. I like to rest it on my knee. Lock it into place. Now you notice that I'm way below the step. That's why you have the aider loop. Step in the aider loop, that locks you in. Three points of contact. Pull up on your tether. Now you can use a lineman belt if you want to. Uh, I don't because it's just an extra thing I don't want to carry, but a lot of people may feel more comfortable just having a small lineman belt or lanyard as we call it in the arborist world wrapped around here. So then you, all you do is go up. Again, maintaining contact. You move your running bowl and up, come down, hang off of your, uh, your tether. So just for demonstration purposes, let's say this was your final height right here. You would install your platform. You could even hunt off the top uh, set of steps on the stick if you want. Platform might be a little more comfortable. Uh, sometimes I bring in two little screw-in steps or strap-on steps and I'll put them on either side. Some people use a ring of steps. Use whatever you want. But you can adjust this until you're comfortable. And then you can, I could sit like this for an entire sit, but you know, you can turn, take a shot here, take a shot here. You could even turn yourself right around, get a shot this way. Lean out. I would have I'd prune that off if I was actually hunting. You get a shot this way, and you could even turn yourself completely, and you can shoot this way around the back of the tree. So to get yourself down, all you do is reverse this. So you bring your running bowling down. As soon as you set that running bowling, it'll hold. It, it'll grip right away. Loosen your stick. Drop it down. Tighten it up. Stand on it. Take a little bit of slack out and then move down. So I've moved down again. You're hanging in your saddle. Drop your stick. Drop it as low as you can get it. Tighten it up. Stand on it while you're still attached. That's locked. Maintaining three points of contact with the tree. Bring it down, lock it in step down and you would continue on down depending on how high you are normally I can do this really fast I could probably get to 20 feet 25 feet in just maybe a minute maybe two minutes and I can come down just about as fast so he is this aider this aider is just tubular webbing I've got it tied with a beer knot you can look that up on YouTube the beer knot actually is, once it's joined, is stronger than the tubular webbing. So, ground level, you can come down, bring your tether down, untie your running bowling. Somebody dirt biking in the background. One of the few places they're not gonna close. And uh, there you go. So what, also what I like to do with my tether, some guys like to tie a short one from here 
hanging down, that's fine. You can do that too. I just have these kicking around, so that's why I have this one. So it goes from the top and hangs down. But I think for deer season, I'll probably make a shorter one and just have it, you know, hanging maybe about a foot underneath here um, because it'll achieve the same benefit. So, and once you're down, you can unhook your stick. And that's it. So I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube of people using different methods to go up trees. Um, ladder sticks are fine, which is probably what I'm gonna use. I have the ability to ascend up into a tree though, hunt off of my lifeline and come down without even putting a stick up and I'll show you that. But this can be used in conjunction with steps. Uh, we don't want to ever spike a tree or spur a tree. I see a lot of videos on YouTube of bow hunters, gun hunters saying that's an acceptable method of climbing up. It's not. It will damage the tree and uh, there have been cases where you know if it's a soft tree and you get your spike dug in too far you can't get it out. So you can put yourself at risk which isn't good. So you can see this crotch, that little crotch right there. We're gonna use that for an example. This is called a throw weight. So this is made by Weaver, Weaver Leather. You can buy this, you know, any Arbor Supply Store. Um, Treestuff.com in the States is a good one. Universal Arbor Supply in Canada is a good one. This is throw line. So it's actually Dyneema. This is 1.75 millimeter diameter. So I just have a loop on here and you can tie it. Some people like to use a slip knot to tie it, but I leave the loop in. So you just take your loop, you pass it through the eye, bring it up, and then you take the loop, put it around the fat bottom of the throw line, and you pull it up, and that's called a girth hitch. Now to undo that, and that's important, this is important, to undo this, you see the loop that goes over the line? Pardon the uh, stain here, but I stain and arrows. You pull that out, and then you drop the fat butt through in reverse, and it pulls it out. So again, pull it through the eye, fat butt through, and that's called a girth hitch. So I would recommend probably buying 40 feet of this. You don't have to have a huge cube like this. This is for, for my work. Um, so this has 180 feet. You're never going to need that. But 40 feet, any type of little bag would work. A, a chalk line bag for rock climbing would be perfect. There's no specific way you put it in the bag. Because if you try to coil it and put it in, or if you try and coil it and keep it coiled and think that's going to work, that will not work. It will tangle. So this simple matter just like that flaking it in no rhyme no reason so then what you're gonna do is you have to practice this a few times stand back and up over the crotch just like that now I'm gonna pull it down and back only because I want to get it away from that branch okay so that that's down so this would be this will be my lifeline. Two a lot of different ways of doing this. If you have a, a big crotch like this that's open, you can just do this method, clip a carabiner into it. You can untie the uh the throw bag and you can tie it around the line or if it has an eye on it which i would recommend when you buy an eye get or a rope get one with a spliced eye you can just tie it through the spliced eye but for this i'm just going to do that hook it on i'll throw it up So there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, I'm gonna show the base tie, actually, because it's just easy 
That way you can uh, take your line with you when you go. If you want to leave the line in the tree uh, for another trip, I wouldn't recommend a base tie unless you're on private property because somebody can untie it. But uh, I'll show you both methods. So this is gonna be the basal tie. Now, this is a quick, easy knot, it's life support. You can tie a figure eight if you want. When a figure eight is loaded with weight, it's hard to get undone. So an alpine butterfly, if you're left-handed or right-handed, you're right-handed, put it around your left hand. One, two, three times around. You grab the middle one, you pull it up, pull it through, all of them, then you pull on that. So this is your alpine butterfly. This is what it'll look like, okay? So you can bring that around the tree. Take your carabiner. And I would really recommend an auto locker. I talked to Jason on the podcast about this. That will lock. There's no way that that can come uh, open accidentally because it takes three movements. Push up, turn, open. Right? Put this in and put it so that the gate, which is the working part, is away from the tree. Like you don't want the gate sitting in here. You don't want to use one like this because this cannot lock. So if it gets pushed against the tree the wrong way, it can open and work itself out. So these are not life support. Don't ever use them for life support. Okay. So that's locked into place. So if you are going to use the baseline technique, remember you do have the length of the rope running down the side of the tree. So when you install your steps, put them under this rope, okay? So don't weight this when you're climbing. Um, use, a, use a lanyard or a lineman belt when you're using this method. When you're installing sticks, unless you're doing the one stick method where you don't need it, but if you are installing a series of sticks, don't, uh, don't weight this because you may not be able to sneak the, uh, the strap underneath the line once it's weighted. So I'm going to tie a VT onto here, Valdorian Tress A, so how I tie it. Make a U in front of the line, both ends hanging down. Take the top one, go around, or bottom, doesn't matter. Go around the opposite direction. Kind of work those out. So I'm going to do four wraps. So there's four total wraps here. And then you take the top one, go underneath the bottom one. So it's X'd in behind. Both legs are facing facing you. So then you just make one wrap and go around the back and make another one, just like that. And you'll take your micro pulley. All these things are pretty cheap to buy. This is a Petzl Ball Lock AMD, one of the best uh, carabiners you can use. I would highly recommend these or DMM, which is the first one. These ones are a ball lock. So you can just push on that and open it one hand real easy. So you go through the eye, through the pulley, through the eye. And then what I do, what you should do, is reverse this so it's upside down, like that. Because you want to be able to clip it into your saddle. This is another item I use. This is a Petzl foot ascender. Any foot ascender will work. You can buy them so this locks so the rope won't pop out. I would recommend one of these. This one doesn't, I have to manually lock it with a carabiner. That's what this is for. So when it's in, it goes through here and this prevents it from opening too far so the rope can't fall out. So you're gonna clip into the front bridge on your saddle. This just opens up, the rope goes in. You take this and you click it into place. So now, when I stand on that rope, that, that bites. This is a small chest harness that I had. A friend of mine made it, it's just web loop. You can find them online, any tree, uh, 
Tree Supply Company, Arborist Supply Company will carry them. So it has a carabiner on the front. I just clip, clip that into place. So as you can see, when I'm walking up, this is moving with me, right? And when I stop, it's holding me in place. So I've got where I'm gonna hunt. You're on your platform. Take your carabiner off, clip it on your saddle somewhere. Unclip your chest harness. Then if you have a separate tether that you're going to use to hunt from, you put that tether on, clip it into the bridge of your saddle, then you can unclip this one, your climbing system. And that could just be stowed away, wrap around the tree, clip onto uh, the down line, wherever you want to put it. The beauty about this system is, and your foot of center you can just leave on. I mean, if you want to take it off, because it will click if you hit hard, but for the most part, it won't make any noise. But you do have possibility of metal on metal, so maybe take it off. The beauty about this system is when you're done hunting, you unhook your pack, your bow, lower them to the ground, everything on the ground, then you Take your tether off, you, you clip, take this, unclip it from where you clipped it, clip it back into your ring, your bridge, whatever you're using. So you'll have both your tether and your lifeline. Undo your tether, or you can use it if you want, but it's probably faster to undo it because now you're tied in. Now, when you're coming down the tree in the dark, you can just stand out from your step and you can just come down nice and slow. Anytime you stop, it'll hold you. You don't even have to touch the steps, right? Because this is one of the biggest problems are getting out of these in the dark. You can get, get injured, you can fall, you can slip this way. Right till you get to the ground. Then pull your hitch. Unhook. And come around here. Undo your knot and your carabiner. I wouldn't recommend pulling this side back up and over because you could get it stuck. Take your carabiner out, hook it somewhere. The alpine butterfly, which you just learned how to tie, even though it was weighted with my weight, comes undone like that. And you pull your rope out and it'll come right out and over and back to you. All right, so the other method you can use, this is the running bowline. This is if you're going to leave your line in the tree. So you tie your running bowline around. Then have your length of throw line that you use to get the, the tree, the rope up into the tree. Put, put a little micro carabiner on it. And then you're going to clip it right here underneath the bowline. So you'll pull this up tight. So now you've used this to climb up and down the tree. You're all done hunting. Once you, once you climb up the tree, like you can clip this on. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. You don't have to do this till you're up in the tree, right? Till you're ready to leave. Then you can clip it in, drop the throw line down to the ground. But for demonstration purposes, we're doing this. So you're all, you're down, everything's down. You don't want to leave this in the tree. Um, just pull here. So that carabiner that I put in pulls the running bowline right back down to you. But don't, don't clip it in here in the loop that goes around the rope because that will stick you every time, okay? You won't be able to get it down. You wanna have, here's the loop going up, this bow right here, the slack end of the rope, clip it into here. So again, you could pull on that, weight that as hard as you want, and then it'll come right back down to the tree. So that's how you can get it out if you wanna do it from the ground. 
with a running bowline, a cinching run, running bowline up to the tree. And uh, sometimes though you can leave them. Like if you're in an area where you know nobody's gonna get in, you can leave that in. I like to take them out because I don't wanna take the chance that a squirrel has decided that some of this would make good nesting material. And they could have chewed the rope above the limb where you can't see and you start climbing and it snaps. So bad news all around. Quick trip to the ground. And you just pull rope out and there you go so all of this this is quite bulky all of this is, is bigger because this a lot of this is my climbing stuff for bow hunting or gun hunting you wouldn't have that you could put it all in a small little bag and then have your section of rope uh i think this rope's probably 30 feet so you know 30 foot section of rope 40 foot section of rope will get you up 15 or 20 feet if you don't want to go that high you could probably do uh just just a 30 foot section of rope would be lots because you need a little bit to do the base tie and that's it so i hope this helps you guys um because i see an awful lot of videos of people doing it wrong on youtube i am a professional arborist this is what i do for a living so anything that i can do to help other hunters not fall not get injured not die um not get paralyzed is uh is a, a bonus for sure so stay tuned we will be doing more videos and more instructional videos hunting videos climbing videos spear fishing videos everything ciao you see how this is low anytime you're trying any new climbing system or any new type of gear i do it with my climbing gear for work but you know, do it for your uh, climbing gear, for bow hunting, gun hunting, whatever type of hunting you're doing out of off the ground. Practice low and slow. Don't watch the video, get out to the woods, put everything up and go up doing it the first time like that because you could get into a lot of trouble. May work out perfectly the first time, might not. There might be things that you uh, find that you want to tweak on and change, so that's probably a good thing. But yeah, for sure, don't ever do it first time 25 feet up a tree low and slow